What's up? What's up, everyone? Adrian Morrison here. I want to welcome you to the Profit Power Hour. I'm going to go ahead and get my camera on. Let's go ahead and get that to pop up. Okay, so get this bottle out of the way. The camera lens is picking it up. Uh, I just got myself a fresh haircut today. Nice. Okay, my hair was getting crazy. Uh, you know, new year, new haircut. I'm um, feeling good. I hope that you all are feeling amazing. I want to welcome you to the Profit Power Hour. Um, as you all know, I started this year off as a new dad. So, um, yeah, uh, November 30th, we had a little boy. So if you're new to the webinar, uh, it's my first child. And um, I have been extremely tired the last couple uh, the last couple of weeks. He actually turns six weeks old tomorrow. So six weeks of very little sleep. Um, a couple of weeks ago, though, I was just strung out on a webinar, y'all could tell. And uh, I promised you that due to like me noticing how poor my performance was, I promised that I was going to get some rest. And so, uh, you know, we can't operate without sleep. And it's it's not fun to go into the new year, you know, sleep deprived. So uh, what I've done is, and, and you know, just starting out this webinar as you all come in, uh, I can't wait to teach you this new e-commerce strategy. It's literally going to blow your mind. I promise you, I promise you this is going to blow your mind. But it's important when you notice things that you need to fix, be it in your business, your health, your, your mindset, right? You actually fix them. And I got to the point uh, a week ago where my body just kind of completely broke down, like mentally and physically. Actually, things started going wrong with me, like just weird things. My, it was my body breaking and telling me, dude, you are not recovering each day. And I train very intensively in, in the gym. Like I have intense workouts. I have a trainer. Um, and, you know, uh, I finally hit my limit. And, uh, you know, the, the last webinar before last was bad. The one before that was, was much better. This one, I promise you was going to be incredible. Um, but I took action. So I haven't missed, uh, working out for more than one day in a week. Um, really ever, like since I've started, uh, lifting weights and last week I got out of the gym and I was just so exhausted. It was on a, um, Friday. And I just said, that's it. You know what? I'm going to take a break. I don't, my muscles aren't going to disappear in a week. And so I skipped Saturday's workout. I skipped Monday's workout. I skipped today's workout and I'm going to skip tomorrow's workout. And I'm going to let my body recover. And I'm telling you this, not because you all go lift weights, right? And you don't all have brand new babies, but <clears throat> before we dive into this, uh, tonight, it's just a, it, it's a habit that you should create. You know, last week we talked about habits for the new year. Uh, you know, goals are great, but habits are what help you achieve your goals and bad habits lead to failure. And so I'm creating a habit of not only being aware of the things that are disturbing my performance and holding me back, I'm creating a habit of fixing them. I'm creating a habit of taking action and doing what's necessary to put my body and my mind and my business, my students um, in the best position possible to thrive. OK, so this year, as we move forward, and I'm not going to give you some big new year speech and, and all that stuff, I would be saying this one way or the other, regardless of it being a new year. But <clears throat> I want you to start thinking about creating a habit of being aware of things that are costing you time, money, success. And I want you to create a habit of not only being aware of those things, but taking action, fast action to fix those things. Like for me, not going to the gym, which is an outlet away from work. Like the, the only time I don't think about work is when I'm in the gym. And it's like an escape from reality. Like I hate not going, but I feel so much better. Like thousand times better because I'm not tearing my body apart, right? While I'm getting no sleep and I'm, I'm you know, doing all these things in business. So that's my little uh, speech for the beginning of the webinar, motivation. 
um, tips. It's not always about how do I make money, Adrian, by starting a Shopify store. It's how do I create the mindset that will enable me to be successful with Shopify? Because Shopify doesn't make people successful. It's the people that run Shopify stores that make themselves successful. And those people have good habits, right? Those people take action. Those people are doers and they're not sitting on the sideline. So tonight, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to help you, if you are on the sideline, step off the sideline and into the game. And I'm going to make it easy for you. As a matter of fact, let's just use the analogy of bowling, okay? I'm going to put the bumpers up for you so it's impossible for you to, you know, uh, go shoot and shoot it in the gutter, right? So right now you all see uh, our welcome screen here. So if you don't have a Shopify store, go get a Shopify store. What are you waiting on? The link is here every week. Go get your trial on Shopify. Uh, number four is we have four vendors that we recommend using. Um, and there's another one I'm going to show you tonight that is I've been recommending as well. Uh, so you got Pillow Profits, you got Shine On, you got Zen Drop, and you got CJ Drop Shipping. These are all great vendors. Okay. So go check those vendors out. Now, we're also going to talk about the Chinese New Year and something that you can do to avoid Chinese New Year. For those of you that don't know what Chinese New Year is, um, uh, in China, they take a very long holiday to celebrate the Chinese New Year. And sometimes they shut down factories for four to six weeks. So if you're in e-commerce and you're solely dependent on China drop shipping, then your business essentially slows down to a halt for four to six weeks or people have very long wait times. So a lot of people shut their, their stores down. Well, they don't shut them down, but they pause ads and stuff, right? Or they advertise extended uh, shipping times. What I do each year is if I have stuff that I'm shipping from China, because I do US vendors and Chinese vendors. Chinese vendors are great because uh, they're more you know, profit margin built in to those products. US is great because US can ship anywhere in the world. I can ship to UK, Australia, Canada, whatever from the US and get faster shipping, but it's a, at a bit of a premium price, but there's still plenty of profit margin, uh, you know, potential built in. So um, I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna show you what I do each year when the Chinese holiday and new year um, kind of kicks in and I, how I adapt, right, um, and how I pivot. So um, it's so funny, I'm using sports analogies and I'm, I don't know anything about sports, but I do like basketball, right? And if you ever watch basketball, like you watch LeBron James, um, you see a gazillion obstacles in his way. Like LeBron, any basketball player, um, is trying to get the goal, right? And our, 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 our goal is a sale. Our goal is get customers to buy some from our store. And we have obstacles in our way too. Chinese New Year is an obstacle. Um, you know, all the other players on the court are obstacles. And they come and they screen and they block and they throw their hands up in the air like this, you know. Um, and what you'll see is you'll see LeBron stop, think, right, and pivot. He can keep one foot on the ground and he can pivot to the left. He can pivot to the right, right? And he can make moves. And that's what you need to do in your business is sometimes you need to pivot when an obstacle gets in your way and tries to block you from your goal. You have to adapt or die, right? And those that can pivot and those that can adapt are the ones that survive. And the thing is, it's really easy. You just don't know what you don't know. And I'm here to inform you and enlighten you. So what I want you to do is I want you to jump over to our amazing Facebook group which is located at facebook.com slash groups slash profit ph. And I want you to tell everybody to get their butt on this webinar because I'm going to teach you a brand spanking new strategy that you most likely have not seen before. It's going to help you pivot to U.S. vendors with ultra fast shipping. So while the Chinese New Year is in full effect, your business is still scalable and can run at full force. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with print on demand using AI, <clears throat> artificial intelligence. So it's AI hack that's gonna help you do print on demand 
with no artists necessary, no graphic designer necessary. I'm gonna show you how to create done for you artwork that you were able to sell and you don't have to shut down. All right, so tell everybody in the group to do that. Uh, if you're not in the group, go join us at uh, facebook.com slash groups slash profit PH. Uh, we have roughly uh, 20,000 people in the group right now. I believe the number goes up. I did purge the group uh, not long ago. I, I think maybe we kicked out like 2,000 or 3,000 people or something that were not active because being in this group is a privilege. It's free. Um, it is definitely a, a privilege to be in this group and a part of this community. And when we see bad actors, spammers, inactive people um, that are inactive for like ridiculous periods of time, we just kick them out. I want the group to be small. I don't care about the vanity of having a big Facebook group. I give, I, I don't even market anything or sell anything in the Facebook group. It's just, it's for you all. So I want to keep it, uh, I want to keep the group high quality. So sometimes that means keeping it small um, and not 100,000 people. Anyways, go there, tell everybody to get in. All right, tell everybody to pop in right now um, at facebook.com slash groups slash profit PH, okay? Now, let's talk about the Chinese New Year real quick. All right, so the Chinese New Year here on Google um, starts January 22nd. So it's right around the corner. And as a matter of fact, oftentimes some factories in China will just shut down a week early. So, um, and if you just Google it, you know, how long is the Lunar New Year? Uh, what is the theme of Chinese New Year? How long does Chinese New Year last? Um, 15 days, so about two weeks. But you'll see that some factories, right, uh, will shut down for like three weeks or four weeks. So if you're working with any vendors on AliExpress, um, if you're working with any vendors on CJ drop shipping, if you're working with any like pillow profits, which has a lot of boots on the ground in China, you should reach out to them, look at their blog, whatever, and see like, you know, what is the, what is their, uh, you know, what does their Chinese new year status look like? So, um, I'll usually reach out to my vendors from AliExpress and say, Hey, how long are y'all going to be out? And oftentimes a lot of them will still work. They'll say, oh, we're just going to take two to three days off, um, you know, because we, we don't want to lose your business. So everyone's different. But the smartest thing to do um, for this is just pivot to U.S. vendors temporarily. So Chinese New Year, e -com. If you type that in, it'll give you a lot of information um, if, or, if you're e-commerce. So um, like all you need to know uh, to sell in Chinese New Year 2023, okay? So there's a lot of information here. This is like CJ Dropshipping has Chinese New Year's coming, how to prepare, all right? So this is December 22nd. So there's a great blog. It's on Chinese, it's on CJ Dropshipping, and it's a it's a really, uh, this is a vendor that we recommend. So maybe you go read this, right? I'm, I don't need to go through this and waste our time um, showing you something that you can read yourself, right? Um, so it's gonna kind of give you an idea of, how long it's going to last and some tips that you can use to prepare for it. This isn't a big deal. If you just opened up your Shopify store and you're sitting here like, gosh, I just opened up my store and now I can't sell anything. Then you have the wrong mindset. Okay. You're letting an obstacle get in your way and you're not adapting and you're not pivoting. And if you can't adapt and pivot through this, good luck because you're gonna need it in entrepreneurship. It is full of pivots. It's full of the need to adapt or die. And that's why not everybody does this, okay? But this isn't even a big deal. I've been dealing with this since 2014, since we started doing e-commerce. So what is that? That's six, uh, oof, nine years. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, so it's not a big deal. It's very easy to just pivot to the left or pivot to the right. I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So. That being said, let's talk a little bit about what I just mentioned I'm going to show you. And that is how to do print on demand from AI hacks. So print on demand is the ability to go into your Shopify store and create products like this. All right. So this is a coffee mug right here. It's got a pit bull on it. Um, if you know me, you know, if you follow what I do, like my biggest niche in e-commerce is dogs. And I love customer regeneration regeneration niches, which means that um, 
you know, every day people adopt a dog. So they become a Pomeranian parent, a pit bull parent, uh, whatever, you know, short haired, uh, what is that? Short haired, whatever. I forgot the name of it. Some weird uh, name. I thought I was going to try to be funny and say, uh, but they become dog parents. Okay. Every day people have babies and they become parents and things change and they start wanting to buy different things and different onesies and swaddles and, and all toys and all sorts of stuff, right? Um, every day people become of age to drink and they start to fancy beer. They start to fancy becoming a wine connoisseur, right? So there's so many customer regenerative uh, niches. Every day people become, you know, new fans of sports and baseball and football and basketball, so on and so forth. So the best thing that you could do right now, in my opinion, is pivot to print on demand. Now, the problem with print on demand, right? That means where you get an image and you're able to place it on different, like this sweatshirt right here, this canvas art right here. Um, you know, I have like various different, like this balloon. I could sell this on a balloon. You can put an image on a variety of products. The problem is with print on demand, most people say, well, I'm not an artist. How do I find good art to put on um you know, to put onto, um, you know, th these things, t-shirts and, and yoga pants and balloons and whatever. Thing is, this works. Like I've taken pictures of dogs and sold thousands and thousands and thousands of sets of pillows with pictures of dogs on them. It, an immense amount of yoga pants with pictures of dogs on them. Shoes, purses, tote bags, you name it, right? I've sold pictures of dogs similar to this on those pieces and and i've i've generated you know seven figures in sales revenue doing that so obviously i know that this works right but again the problem for most people is where do i find the the art where do i find the pictures where do i find the graphics how do i get a graphic designer to do this for me and and how much is it going to cost to pay an artist to draw art for me well would you believe that I have the rights to this image right here, okay? I did not hire an artist. I didn't spend a single penny for this. And this is an original piece of art that I created myself. And I did it in less than 30 seconds. Just type in if you believe me or not. Say, I don't believe you or I do believe you. I didn't hire an artist. I created this myself without having to use Photoshop or actually you know, draw anything. Okay, it didn't cost me a dime and I have the rights to it. And you can do the same exact thing with unique images in any niche. And you can start doing print on demand um, just by typing in letters. All you have to do is type in letters, okay? Because I used an AI, an artificial intelligence machine to draw this for me. And it was completely free. And I have the right to do it. Listen, I did a webinar a couple of uh, weeks ago on uh, AI. I showed you there was this trend where everyone was was creating images. They were they were downloading this AI app on. Um, they were they were downloading an AI app on whatever it was, uh, an iPhone. It's called Linza, and they were putting in images of themselves, and that AI would look at the picture. And it would literally draw, uh, you know, cool images like this right here. Okay, so this AI took a picture of me and it started drawing all this really, I mean, it looks just like me. It's really cool. I mean, you know, that's, I guess, what I would look like if I was, uh, I don't know, shirtless wearing a leather strap over my shoulder. I don't know. Um, but yeah, these are cool. But like, what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do? with cool images of yourself, okay? So this is vanity right here, right? So this is all by AI. It was, I didn't, no one drew this, a machine um, drew this, right? That's really cool. And it's neat and it became a fad and it went extremely viral. But this isn't what we wanna do to make sales, right? We're not selling pictures of ourselves. And then I talked to you about the AI chat bot that exists. Um, it's called ChatGPT. You've probably heard a little bit about it. All right, so chat uh, GPT right now is on overload. It's so popular. So you see here, it's it's telling me that um, right now 
they're at capacity, meaning they probably need to upgrade their servers or something. But I did a webinar. You can go back a couple of weeks and watch this and it'll write blog posts for you. It'll write your email marketing. It'll write your Facebook ads. You say, write me a Facebook ad about this balloon. Boom. It'll do it. It's incredible. You don't even have to hire copywriters anymore. And then as I was diving into AI, which you can see here, according to Google Trends, in the last 12 months, there's just been this incredible spike of max capacity of people that are searching for AI. Like even if I just look at the last like 90 days, all right, you're going to see this huge spike in AI. And this company at OpenAI, which is a free service currently, um, it is just kind of taking over and it's changing the game. It really is like the future is going to be incredible because of this right here. Uh, the future for uh, just people in general and the future, especially for marketers. And so the same company that has this, this uh, chat thing that literally will write stories for you, blogs for you. It'll do a thesis for you. It'll write a biography for you. You can talk to it. Um, and, and tell it to find information for you. All right. They also have a, um, they also have a AI art generative bot. So what this art, this generative art bot will do, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's called Dolly two. It's D A L L E and the number two. So what this will do is it will go in and it will draw art for you, okay? So this is a bot that will draw art for you. Now let's discover this a little bit, and I'm gonna show you real quick um, some of what it can do. We'll do some live examples, and I'm gonna show you why this is gonna put a lot of graphic artists out of business, and it's gonna give you the opportunity to get on-demand, fully custom, fully unique artwork that you have the rights to use. And just to ensure, and I'm not an attorney, I failed law school, So, uh, but I looked at their terms, and this is right from their website, help.openai.com, and any images that you are, any images that you uh, create, let me go, is, yeah, here we go. So can I use AI-generated uh, images commercially? Yes, you can. Um, you can sell these commercially if you want to. They updated the rights to be able to do that. So. Um, you can go straight to their site and you can look at their terms. How do I know if an image is free for commercial use, but that's not Dolly. So you can go look at all of their stuff and, and you can you can read about it. Um, and their, their open AI terms do say that you can, in fact, um, you can, in fact, use their images, right? So you anything created is unique to you and you can use, all right? So... Um, you own the images you create with this platform, including the right to reprint, sell, and merchandise, regardless of whether an image was generated through a paid or free credit. Okay, I want you to read this. All right, so this means, this is important because this means that if we create an image with this software, we can actually go sell it without having to worry about copyright infringement unless, a, you know, we were making a picture of Iron Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't create a picture of Iron Man because the rights of Iron Man are owned by, uh, you know, Marvel. So, um, you know, just use common sense, right? So let me show you how this works and how AI um, created these images for me that I can now put on mugs and all sorts of other things. But before we do that, like this is a canvas print. Look how incredible this is. I mean, this is so cool, this piece of art. Um, and you can all start running a print-on-demand business. Now, I've made an immense amount of sales with print-on-demand, actually dating probably back to 2013. I started print-on-demand before I started Shopify. Okay, so one of the vendors that we use um, is called T-Launch, okay? So T-Launch is available, it's on the App Store. Um, so when you go to your, your Shopify store, okay? T-Launch is a app that you can download and it is completely free to download it. It's not a paid app. So this isn't, for those of you negative Nancys uh, on the webinar or, uh, you know, people that are like, oh, I knew he was about to sell me something. This is free, okay? You go go download it. 
I get nothing if you use it. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I don't care if you use it or not, but I've sent them an immense amount of stores and clients over the years, and I really wish they would pay me something for it, but they don't. Uh, but anyways, what, the, what this company does, it's a US-based company. They ship uh, from the US. You can come in and you can legitimately create swaddle blankets, hoodies. Um, you can create t-shirts. Um, you can create Apple watch straps, balloons, which you saw this balloon right here. Um, I created one. So very, very cool. Um, you can create, uh, let's see, home, different home goods, coasters, uh, doormats, beach towels, blankets, pillows. I've sold a lot of pillows from tea launch before too. yard signs, um, you know, shower curtains, which I've actually sold some of jewelry, kitchenware. Uh, bowls, um, you've got jigsaw puzzles and um, you've got office stuff, I mean, pet stuff, you've got wall art, you got images that you can legitimately print onto footballs and baseballs and basketballs, right? So when people think about print on demand, they're generally thinking about, oh, selling t-shirts is phased out. Selling coffee mugs is saturated. Listen, adapt or die. Print on demand is not uh, print on demand is not, you know, exclusively t-shirts and coffee mugs. Print on demand expands to baseballs, basketballs, um, kitchenware, Bluetooth speakers. Um, it, it, it expands to baby swaddles, it, it, yoga pants, shoes, right? And T-Launch is one of those companies where uh, you can go and quickly and easily create products that are drop shipped, you don't see them or touch them or pay for them until you get a sale. They will charge you the wholesale rate, ship it to your customer for you, and they take care of any and all fulfillment, which is cool. Now, let's talk about how AI created this artwork for me, and, and, and let's look at a couple of examples of how this might work. So first, let's read a little bit about this, uh, this tool. And again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly or not, um, you know, I probably should have, you know, done some research on how to pronounce it before I did a webinar on it. But as I was diving into AI, uh, and I, I'm in the NFT space, so I buy a lot of NFTs, I trade NFTs. And so I'm in Discord and, uh, and I'm talking about NFTs with people. And there's all starting to talk about now people are creating NFTs with this artificial intelligence. So how quickly and easily you can create NFTs as an artist without actually having to draw. It's uh, AI generated art. So started asking questions and lo and behold, I found this, right? They're like, well, you gotta check this out. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. So what does it do? Okay, so this is a new AI system that can create realistic images and art from a description in natural language, okay? So it can create real images, it can create art, and it can also combine concepts, attributes, and styles. So like an astronaut, teddy bears, and a bowl of soup. Okay, so text description, a an astronaut, teddy bears, and a bowl of soup. So let's do teddy bears right here. Okay, so uh, a bowl of soup. This is what it created. Uh, this is a portal to another, okay, so a bowl of soup that's a portal to another dimension that is digital art. So it doesn't look real, it looks digital, okay? Well, what about an astronaut riding a horse or an astronaut lounging in a tropical resort in space or an astronaut playing basketball with cats in space? Like if you type in an astronaut playing basketball with cats in space is a children's book illustration, that's what it will draw um, in a minimalist style or in watercolor style, right? Um, teddy bear shopping for groceries um, as one line drawing or uh, in ancient Egypt or I don't I can't even pronounce this okay so you write what you want it creates it for you um, it can expand images beyond what's in the original canvas as well creating expansive new compositions so this is a bit more um, challenging I've played with it but it can really take an image and it can change the whole like concept of the image which is really cool so it can take it can make realistic edits to existing images from natural language description meaning you just type in what you want and it can add and remove elements 
while taking shadows, reflections, and textures all into account. This is mind blowing right here. So I can literally tell this, this is the original image, okay? On the left-hand side, let me zoom in on this. And if you're using this software, which is free by the way, for like the first 50 images, and I think they give you 15 additional each month and they start charging for it, like you buy credits, but these are the edits. So number three here, all right, we say select a location to add a flamingo. All right, so see how we added flamingos to the right over here? Y'all see that? Okay, all right, so here's another image that did it, another image that did it, another image that did it, okay? Now, let's also say, let's put the flamingo in the pool. All right, so now let's put the flamingo in the pool and it'll do it different variations of flamingos in the pool. Well, let's put the flamingo closer to us. All right, there it is right there. So, you know, you can do some really interesting edits with this tool. It can take an image and create different variations uh, of it inspired by the original. So these are different variations of this image right here that it's created. Or like these of these cute little uh, mice right here. Um, it, they, if you upload an image, <clears throat> it'll create a similar image. So if you see like a really cute image on a stock art website, you could upload it here and it would create a unique variation of a similar image. How cool is that? It's just, it's incredible. All right. So, um, you can come here and, and you can read like how their machine learning works, how their software works and you can read all about it. And it's very interesting to read. I usually say, oh, who cares how a car runs, how, how a car works, as long as you can get in it and drive it. For now, I would say get in and drive, but it's really incredible to go back and, and learn um, how this works. So you can sign up for a free account with uh, Dolly 2 okay? Uh, if that's how you pronounce it. And then, you can come over here once you're logged into your account. And this is me logged into the account. <coughs> Up here, I can type in anything I want. An impressionist oil painting of sunflowers and a purple vase. And it will paint it for me. And these are some examples of other things that people have done. So to create this fish in a bowl right here, Someone typed in 3D render of a cute tropical fish in an aquarium on a dark blue background that's digital art. To create this avocado looking chair here, somebody typed in an armchair in the shape of an avocado. An expressive oil painting of basketball player dunking depicted as an explosion of a nebula. I mean, just your mind like can really expand on this stuff. Um, this someone typed in oil painting by Matisse of a humanoid robot playing uh, chess right? All of these images were created by a bot machine that does machine learning and it gets better and better and better as more people use it. A comic book cover of a superhero wearing headphones, okay? So I started playing around a little bit and I started to kind of like type in things to create. You know, these are like my first attempts playing around with stuff. So you'll see here, this is that image and I typed in colorful art of a pit bull dog with a transparent background, okay? Then it also created this, right? Look at these images. Like it created this right here. Um, it created this image right here. Um, it created, I tried to get it to write text for me and I wanted it to uh, make like quotes about coffee. It needs some work on that. So you'll see I typed in t-shirt design for coffee lovers that says life is good after coffee. Um, little digital mice. Here's some more. I mean, look how incredible this is right here. It painted this pit bull as a colorful art of uh, pit bull dog. Okay. And then these are some like, uh, I just typed in painting of a pit bull. So this looks more like an actual, like real painting. And then these are actual, it looks like a real image, but it's not. This is AI generated art of a pit bull and it looks dang near real. <clears throat> so playing with this a little bit, um, we can come back over here and we can type in <clears throat> anything that we want. Let me take a sip <coughs> of my drink. Sorry about this. Okay. 
<clears throat> now, I like that with print on demand, <clears throat> I really like to do, get images of animals because there are large, massive groups of people that have an affinity for specific animals. <clears throat> like one of my friends, he's obsessed with turtles. And every time we're out somewhere and we, we go by a store or whatever, um, and he even tells the story like himself and says, every time I'm somewhere, um, I got and I see a turtle, I have to buy it. I'm not a real turtle like a stuffed animal or a sculpture of it. He just has this thing for turtles. Um, growing up, my mom loved elephants. So there were all these like elephant pictures all over our house, like little elephant sculptures and stuff. I know another dude that's obsessed with cows. I, I mean, it's just like people love animals or they think that they're cute. Like people are like flamingos, people love cats, so on and so forth. Um, so let's play with that a little bit. All right. So I could say, um, digital. All right. So cows flying in cosmic space, digital art. Okay. So I'm telling this to create an image of cows flying in cosmic space and make it look like digital art. Okay. And a lot of people say, you know, when cows fly, and I say when pigs fly, right? So let's do, we'll do it. We're just going to do cows flying. Okay. I'm going to hit paint. Okay. It is now painting um, cows flying in cosmic space. And it's going to make it look like digital art. Okay. Out of thin air. I mean, look at that. This is nuts right here. That's crazy. Okay. Now, is this what's going to sell to cow lovers? I mean, maybe, you know, this would look really cool on a blanket. As a matter of fact, if I come back over to my Shopify store and <clears throat> I go to products, I mean, look at some older products that I was showing. I know, look, I, I have these like epic galaxy blankets. So we would put like these crazy galaxy images on blankets and poof, like, you know, people absolutely loved it. So if I were to come over to Facebook and type target people that love cows, which you can do, right? I could target cow lovers. Now, I'm just trying to show you some really weird stuff for fun, but it literally has drawn me multiple images of cows floating or flying through outer space, okay? So we could go back and we could say, cute pigs flying art. Pigs flying. Let's just do uh, in sky. Um... Flying, just art, artistic. And we could say like a specific type of art, right? Um, you know, we could do like a cube art, we could do um, just whatever, but look. So these don't really love, it's not always going to come back. So let's do digital art. Watch, it'll do a whole different set. An oil pastel drawing of an annoyed cat in a spaceship. It actually drew that, which is pretty crazy, right? So it, this will create some pretty crazy, and believe me, believe me, people, you could put this on uh, some socks and people would buy it. You put this image and print it all over socks, people will probably buy it. You put this on a pillow, some people are going to buy it, right? Um, so I could come over here and I could say, colorful art of Pomeranian. Let me spell Pomeranian, right? <clears throat> I 
and it will now draw me four variations of colorful art of Pomeranians. Look at this. That one is actually, it's two of these are too realistic. So, you know, you can really play with this. What did I say for these? Let's see what I said. Colorful art of pit bull dog. Okay. Um, so if we start thinking about different things that we could do for print on demand, right? What happens is, is even like right now, because I'm on the spot, I'm getting like blanks. Like, okay, what should I type in? What should I type in? Hmm. But what you can do is you can go to Google you can go to TikTok, you can go to Facebook, and you can start looking at what things are selling with print on demand, right? You can start looking at what types of images are people creating and selling on products, right? So that is really, really simple for you to do. And that starts getting your creative juices, you know, flowing a little bit more. And remember, you can take these images, just like I took this image right here, and you can download them, you can edit them, you can put them on any product you wanna put them on, right? And now this one image, let's just say that this one image right here takes off and people love it and they start buying it. Now I can scale this image by not just selling it on t-shirts and mugs and canvas art, but I can sell this image on like probably 30 or 40 other products and I can scale my business. Because if somebody likes this image on a shirt, chances are they're gonna buy it on a lot of different products. Does that make sense? Okay, so yes, if that makes sense to you. So here's some other ones that we created, just hearts. Um, and again, we have to tell this, uh, like this says, I love my pity. Uh, we tried to have it add some text on there. Um, you're gonna have to give this a couple of, of tries, right? Um, it's not always gonna pump out like the perfect piece right here, but it will create some truly amazing stuff. Like you can see, I started playing with it and I started getting really cool images like this. And I know for a fact that these are the types of images that will sell to dog lovers, right? I know that dog lovers love, love these crazy colors. I know that pit bulls are popular. So I could pump out this for Pomeranians, pit bulls, um, you know, Yorkies, uh, labs, doodles, and I could just have this create all the images for me. And what I do is I cut out having to pay, um, you know, an artist to create images for me. I cut out having to potentially pay royalties as if I'm licensing art from someone, which I've done. And, you know, it's, it, it's easy and it's amazing, right? But it's still, we have to pay, right? Royalties if we're licensing art. Um, let's just say, you know, super hero, um, let's just do superhero flying through space comic art. Similar to what we saw on the homepage, an oil painting portrait of a wearing medieval royal robes background. Oh, let me, oh, I wish I could. Okay, so here is the art that it created. And these aren't like the most amazing ones. So superhero flying through space, realistic. No, let's do, I think they had said comic cover. Let's do give it a couple of shots. And then we download these images and we upload them to T-Launch and we can put them on anything um, we want to do. So like imagine taking the superhero set right here and putting it on a set of pillows and T launch. They have pillows here. So I love pillows because you could do a set of four home goods pillows. All right. So we could create a set of four pillows um, and we could take this superhero set here and we could, we could, you know, have this as like pillows that you would put on a kid's bed or something like that. So we can start generating sales from something just as simple as this. Now these, again, we got to play with it a little bit, tell it what we like. 
um you could see here like this one like it's not a su it's not superman um clearly but it looks really 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 cool it's using the superman colors we can even tell it what colors uh to create so if i come back out here and i just look at some of the stuff that people are, are typing in like teddy bears um i should say teddy bears mi mixing sparkling chemicals um as a 1990 saturday morning cartoon you can see that People can be very specific with what they are saying. Um, let's just think of some other interesting things that we might could. Uh, steampunk, which is a, a, a really popular style of art. Look, that's crazy. Um, a bowl of soup that looks like a monster as a planet or a universe as mixed media needlework as digital art so you know one of the keys i think playing with this is telling it what type of image you're looking for like a 1960s poster mixed media with needlework as digital art or as a comic book art um, or impressionist style or impressionist style so on and and so forth so, you know, you've got to come in here and think. Now, you got to also be careful because you only can get 50 images for free the first month. And then I think it's 15 images free each month after that. And then you're buying credits. So if you come in here and you're just playing around like crazy, you'll end up having to buy credits. So I would say come in and experiment and play around, but also on the same token, Try to be super intentional with what you create. So how do we get this on a product? So I could say, I really like this image right here. So I'm going to download this image. So on the top right, I'm able to download the image and you can see it just pop this up um, and I can download this image right here. All right. Now the image is downloaded. Okay. So I've just downloaded the image. Let's say I want to put it on a product in, uh, <clears throat> in T launch and it could also be in printful and there's a lot of different uh, great print on demand companies but let's just say i don't know let's look we got accessories here um let's do home goods let's see what we got that would be interesting okay so let's say that we got a kid and we want to give them a really cool um a, you know a really cool shower curtain in their shower okay <clears throat> it's going to say that this image needs to be a specific size so this image needs to be 7300 by 7700 this is the only semi -techn technical part of it because the image that we just downloaded is not going to be that size so we have to change the dimensions of the photo which really is just opening up any photo editing app and saying hey i want the image to be uh this particular size so let's open this up okay so i've opened this image up in photoshop now no this is not the best image in the world okay it's not the best image in the world we would need to get something a little bit better but it's really fun to play around with this all right now what size does the image need to be it needs to be 7300 by 7700 so this becomes very very simple 7300 by 7700 is very easy to do so all i have to do is first come in here and look at what is our image size okay and it's currently 1024 by 1024 so i'm just going to pop this in look let me look back here again 70 7300 by 7700 okay so let's actually do 7,700, okay? And it's gonna make this image a lot bigger. You can see it made the image really, really big, okay? Um, now it did say 7,300 by 7,700. So what I'm gonna do is, and I'm not a Photoshop expert, but I'm just gonna make sure that this is 7,300 right here. And it's just gonna make the image a little bit um, more narrow. Okay, because that's the width. Boom, okay, there we go, voila. Now I'm going to save this image. So let me just save this real quick. Okay, so I have saved the image.
All right. So I have now saved the image and I am going to come back over here to print my print on demand app, T launch. And it says, okay, upload the artwork by clicking select image. Let's go ahead and hit select image. And it's going to tell us, okay, it needs to be 73 by 7,700. So let's upload the file. Um, here it is right here. Let's hit open. Hope that it's the right size because we saved it, right? We told all you have to do when you open up an image and image editor is hit image, edit image size. And then you can say, hey, I want this image to be 7,300 by 7,700. All right. So what it's doing right now is it's uploading this image that we just created with AI art. No, this isn't, I could do a superhero flying through space, holding a medieval sword um, and make it more realistic, whatever you want to do. All right, so here it is, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over here, hit next. Let me zoom out. I wanna make sure I've got all the options created. Okay, so let's hit next here. All right, now this is telling us that we can sell this product here for $69. It's only a $34 cost. We're not paying $34. It's when we sell it for 69 bucks, they take 34. Now we can sell it for more, right? But they recommend kind of like the normal price that you, they might recommend. All right. So then we're going to call this our, you know, superhero, um, superhero uh, shower curtain. And we're going to hit create. All right. Now what it's doing is it is creating this product on our store. And if I come back over here to my products at the top and I just click on my products here, we will see that it is now creating this product and uploading it to the store. So you should see that it's like, you know, um, it's got the little spinning thing. So it is taking that AI art of a superhero. It's putting it on an image of a shower curtain. It's loading it up on my store. And I'm about to be able to sell shower curtains to parents or even adults, right, that, that have superheroes on it. And if you think about shower curtains, a lot of people um, have customs. They don't just get the, the, you know, solid colored shower curtains. A lot of shower curtains have patterns. You could put like, uh, you know, uh, watermelon patterns in, you know, goofy art um watermelons and let's just say uh watermelons and bananas uh a watermelon and banana pattern so while that's doing that let's come back over here okay watermelons and bananas patterned in crazy colors let me spell bananas correctly how do you spell bananas there we go i'm not the smartest person in the world when it comes to spelling Stupid as Okay, cool. So let's come over here. Watermelon, bananas, and crazy colors. Digital art. Okay. Got that spelt right. We'll hit generate. So I don't know what it's going to come up with. Like, that's the thing is you never know. It can come up with epic stuff. You might do it a couple of times to get something even better. Like this right here is is not good. So let's do like pattern, watermelons and banana pattern for, I don't know what type of shower curtain. It might do shower curtain, watermelon and banana pattern art. See what else comes up with. Maybe we have to tell it to do a more specific uh, type of art. Now, while that's doing that, um, you can see here it's starting to get like these different types of patterns and whatnot. Uh, but while it's that's doing that, let's come over here to products and see if that is uploaded yet. It's a big image, so I just want you all to see. 
Okay, there is our superhero shower curtain. It is live on the store. And voila, now we're in the business of selling superhero uh, shower curtains, okay? Now, the stuff that I typed in, like, all came out more cartoon uh, style. And that's not always the case, right? Again, you have to be, you have to be specific in what you say. And it just so happens that uh, tonight, while live doing this, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk and not let there be awkward silence because when you do these, you kind of always have to be talking. And so my brain isn't working and thinking at full capacity on what are some cool things to type in. I didn't come prepared with examples because uh, I kind of like to do stuff on the fly um, and let y'all kind of see how my brain works. But you can see this creates extremely realistic pieces of artwork and it can do it in in various different styles. I mean, it could do a Van Gogh style painting, right? So it's really just up to what you you type in there, and you could see <coughs> the previews of images that it has. Creative, you just come here and you you look at it. So, um, I mean, it does like oil paintings. It does whatever that that is an orange. That's also a fox. This is a dog wearing a a, a hat you know, um, a, a cat and a dog hugging. So you just have to tell it what to do and you have to tell it, you know, what style you want it done in. Just like right here when I did the watermelon and bananas, but let's do watermelon, banana pattern, um, realistic, I don't know. And let's see what it comes up with. Because I don't like any of these that it's come up with so far. You could see when I was doing it before this. <clears throat> yeah, these are a little bit better. Um, you could see when I first started playing with this in this account, it started really popping off some really nice things when I started getting to the dog art. Um, you can see these are really cool, interesting things that might capture people's attention. So it's just about going through, playing with it. Um, you could see like this superhero art right here uh, is you know, that one's not good, but this one right here is actually pretty cool. Um, some of these are not like they kind of mess up the face or whatever. So it's just about what you type in and how you want it to be there. But the point is, is that you can create AI generated artwork and you have to go in and use this a little bit. Even for me, it's new. Like this is something I just discovered talking in, in, a, in, in a discord about NFTs. Um, I was like, immediately my brain was like, wow. Okay. I was already going to teach you print on demand this week, but I was going to teach you how to go find artists. And I was going to teach you how to go to Fiverr and get artists and whatnot. And that's all cool. And it works and it's still recommended. But when I went and I typed this stuff in and I started getting images like this, which you can get, I was like, this is a game changer. And it is the key is you have to come in here and you have to play a little bit and you have to learn what language you need to use, what you need to type in for it to give you what you're thinking about. Because you have to be able to articulate it um, in words, in a sentence here to for it to know what you want. And you can be very, very specific with what you want. You could say a superhero holding a balloon, um, digital art. Look, superhero holding a balloon. My spelling is awful. Um, a superhero holding balloon. Um, superhero holding a balloon. In the zoo. With a volcano. Erupting in the background digital art <laughs> i don't know let's see what that does superhero holding a balloon in the zoo with a volcano erupting in the background so um you can see like it as i got a little bit more specific it i typed in digital art so it changed up the vibe of the art but you can see that it is now like this right here 
it's got this weird looking little guy. I don't know what that, you know, it's not, doesn't look like a superhero, but you can see it is taking what I'm saying and it is, it is drawing stuff. It's trying to draw what I've typed in. Um, and you, again, you might have to change up instead of it being digital art, maybe a different type of art. Um, you might have to talk about different colors or you might have to be more specific with the wording. You can, you can write in a lot of stuff like over here on the home page it's showing you what like these people wrote in an astronaut riding a horse in a uh photo realistic style or a astronaut riding a horse in the style of andy warhol so you can actually kind of quote um different artists which I, I didn't even think about so if you have specific types of artists that you like you can say in style of that type of artist or in a pencil drawing or um, you know, like this one again was like a 1990s cartoon or as digital art. So you can kind of see the difference in the, the type of image you get when you go from steampunk to 1990s cartoon to digital art. Um, and then just like having them, you know, go in and change the style. Um, like this is a style of a specific type of right art. So um, it really changes everything everything okay it changes everything like this is on the moon in the 1980s underwater with 1990s technology um so you know it's kind of it the more people use it the better it becomes i'm not by any means an ai expert not claiming to be but i see the ai trend and i see that it can create incredible images like this that we could be using for print on demand. And again, every output isn't going to be what we want. And unfortunately for this live, um, you know, I didn't get as great of outputs as I wanted, but I, I think I got the point across, right? So you just have to go in and you just have to type and be very specific and you can come up with some amazing artwork that you can use. And it only takes one winning product to change everything. One winning product. So you find one good image that you're able to use and you're not having to pay an artist over and over and over and over and over to do different variations. And you don't have to wait, 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 one week, two weeks. Oh, they went on vacation. Oh, they, uh, you know, <clears throat> they had, um, you know, uh, writer's block for artists. So, this is cool. It's really cool. And we're going to use it to launch products on our own stores. This is absolutely incredible. And I hope that you go in and you play with this. Again, you just go Google uh, D-A-L-L-E-2. It's on OpenAI. And you can start creating really incredible art. Um, so they have the surprise me button, an oil painting of Matisse of a human android robot playing chess surprise a surrealist dream like oil painting a salvador dali of a cat playing checkers i don't know let's let's do this so just so you can see because it's going to probably give us better stuff to say i'm supposed to be ending the webinar now because it's a little bit over an hour but um i love this teddy bear shopping for groceries um a sunlit indoor lounge area with a pool with clear water all right so look at that long sentence and watch what it does it's really cool. So don't sleep on this. Go use this. Um, see if it can put out some really cool images for you. This is pretty incredible right there. And see what you can get. Hopefully it, it'll pop off for you. But my point is, is this is something that you can use right here, right now, completely free. And you can pivot. You can um, adapt. And you can start doing print on demand. Oh, this is sick right here. This is, it just created a, a Pad mat a panda mad scientist mixing mixing sparkling chemicals digital art. You can go market this to people that are into science and love panda bears. You can layer your targeting in Facebook and put this on coffee mugs or whatever you want. Like this is really cool art. So again, I am not experienced enough using this to type in. Like I'm not. I have to practice, and so do you, right? So what I what I would do is I would go practice and I would start putting, going back to our Profit Power Hour Facebook group and telling people the types of things that you're typing in and all work together and suggest together what, what needs to be typed in 
to output like the coolest images. And again, everybody's going to want different styles. Some of them are going to want the realistic stuff, the digital art stuff, the steampunk stuff, the, you know, uh, the, 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 um, Andy Warhol type stuff. It's really up to, to you, right? Art is in the eye of the beholder. So it's not all bad just because you think it's bad. Other people might think, oh, I love this kind of pop style art. Like we could say, you know, um, let's just say, I'm, uh, this is fun for me. So super hero blowing a bubble with gum while slapping a criminal <laughs> pop heart. <laughs> I don't know. My brain is, I feel better, but my brain is still really foggy. Superhero blowing a bubble while uh, slapping a criminal. So see, look, again, I'm not typing in like the perfect stuff to get these types of outputs. So again, we're going to need to practice and I'm, I'm going to have so much fun doing this. But the whole idea of this training is to show you a quick way to find some cool images, to throw in some print on demand art so you can pivot and adapt and we can get through Chinese New Year and still continue to sell and discover new things that could be winning products. So it's gonna be really fun. I'm so excited to see what you all do with this. I'm gonna end this webinar now. Um, uh, thank you all for the love. Thank you all uh, for the, all of the support. And I just appreciate you spending your time to be here. And that's why I show up every week, no matter what, no matter if I'm tired, no matter if I'm sick, no matter if I'm traveling. Right. Um, and I, I just want to be here for you and continue to show you all the new things that I learned because, you know, that's part of growing as an entrepreneur is staying ahead of the curve. Right. You got to have somebody that's ahead of the curve that can pull you along. And I'm ahead. Right. I'm ahead in so many different ways. And even though like we couldn't get the most epic images out of this software tonight, I know that we're going to get them. Right. And as I learn, I'm going to continue to share with you. And this could be a huge game changer for everyone doing print on demand. It's going to be insane. I, I, I already, I know it, it's factual. We just have to figure out what we need to type in to get the kind of stuff that we want. And it's going to change our lives in regards of print on demand marketing. All right, so that's it for tonight. Love you all, go check this out. I'd love to see uh, you know, the examples of what you've done. You can post them in the group. I'll let the moderators know. Um, it's okay to post these types of images as long as it's not like overload. We don't just want a bunch of crazy AI images in the group. It looks spammy. Um, and I'll see you all next week, uh, Tuesday at 9 p.m. EST. And I'll be even more rested on Tuesday because I'll have taken almost a full week off the gym. And I'll be ready to go. And we're going to talk more about what we could do during Chinese New Year. I'm going to show you another vendor next week that you could start selling from um, that is truly incredible. And for this week, let's play with some AI art and print on demand. All right. I'll see you next week. Good night, y'all.